In this lab, we're going to be looking at simple harmonic motion using a pendulum. So first thing, this is going to look a lot like a lab you did at the very beginning of the semester. Remember back then? That was a long time ago. Sorry. We are just going down memory lane. Anyway. Anyway, first part of the lab, you are going to measure the relationship between the period and length of a pendulum. And remember, this was only good for small angles, for theta less than 5 degrees. But now you've been in lab for a while. You're a little older, a little wiser. So no longer are you going to be restrained to angles of 5 degrees. You are now going to get theta more than 5 degrees. And you're going to be able to take data. And we're going to actually figure out what this looks like. So part A you are going to look at the length of the pendulum, how long the string is, and you're going to relate that to its period. And remember, the period is a complete swing. So back and forth. That is one period. Now, from the first lab, you remember that 2 pi over square root of g times l to the 1 half is an approximation for this. But we're interested in better measurements now, so we're going to look for this correction term. So in part b, it's going to be your original period plus some constant as a function of amplitude raised to some power. It's a very small correction, few percent. Well, less than a few percent. A few percent is actually bigger than this correction. So you couldn't see it before, but now we can. How? So the trick is we're not going to arm you with a stopwatch. We are going to use this handy-dandy infrared detector. It shoots an infrared beam. Be careful, it'll cut off your hand if you put it in there. That's a lie. But it's fun to think about. It adds an element of danger, which I think is important. So you're going to pull this back slightly, and it's going to start to swing back and forth. Now the trick to this is that the photogate actually measures to the nearest 0 .0001 seconds. So you need to set your measurement to four decimal places. This is done in the Logger Pro software. If you record your timing, um, after you get your data, you can double click the box and just make sure it says four decimal places, because that's how accurate we can get. And let's look at parts individually now. So part one, again, this is only valid for angles less than five degrees. You are going to do this for six lengths ranging from 10 to 100 centimeters evenly spaced. So what we have here, medium length, very, well, medium length, short, and very long. And you just swing it back and forth for very small angles and let Logger Pro do the rest. And as you are taking a very precision measurement, it is important that you discard the run. Discard if the standard deviation is greater than a few tenths of an ms, millisecond, millisecond. We are looking at very high precision data, so it matters. For part B, you're going to use amplitudes. So the very first thing you have to do is center the pulley. So, well, I said pulley, pendulum, sorry. Make sure that this beam right here is directly lined up over the 50 mark. Then you pull it back some amplitude. In this case, this would be five centimeters here. This would be 10 centimeters right here. And you're going to let it go. Now in part B, things like air resistance make a big deal, or a big difference. They will get in your way. So you're going to discard data if your standard deviation is greater than 0 0.5 milliseconds. Collecting data, Logger Pro pops up a little screen like this. This is the pendulum lab, and remember you're going to have 10 measurements in part A and 5 measurements in part B. Now the most important part of this is this little button up here. This is the stat button, which brings up the statistics menu which will tell you the mean, the average, and the standard deviation. So look at the mean, record this value right here, and then look at the standard deviation right below it to say, hey, 
is the data good enough to keep? This is because, again, we are doing very precision work. After you have your points, you will make a graph. This is part A. It is, you can tell it's part A. There is period, there is length of the pendulum, and it gives you this nice little curve. Now, remember that you are comparing this to t equals 2 pi over square root of g times l to the 1 half. So you would hope it looks like this little curve. So you'll graph it, and then we need to analyze it. But this is not a straight line, so it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to go to the Analyze menu up at the top. So the Analyze menu, and then it goes to Curve Fit, and it'll pop up this little dialog. And what you can do is you can say, hey, I want to define my own function. So if we know that what we're supposed to get is t equals 2 pi over square root of g times length to the 1 half, you can plug in a formula that says y equals, I'm going to say some constant, times l to the n. And actually, instead of l, this would be x in graphical analysis. And then when you're doing your comparison, n compares to 1 half, and this constant compares to c. And it'll give you the plus minus values just like a straight line. So you'll have your number and error bounds for these two numbers. Now for the next part, the formula you're comparing to is a square, so hopefully it looks kind of like this curve again. This is a very, very tiny curve. Part P is amplitude versus period, by the way. A very tiny curve. So you would never have known that this thing happened, that there was any relationship between amplitude and period, unless you could measure very, very closely. So again, analyze, curve fit, define your function, and now we have t equals t0 plus some number, it's in your lab report, times the amplitude to some power. So when we're defining our function this time, it's going to look like y equals, I'm just going to put this as some constant b plus or minus c a to the n. And again, n lines up with n, oh, sorry, wrote a because that's what it is, but it's actually the x-coordinate. C pairs with this constant, and T0, which is the period from the first part, pairs with B. Uh, you can use whatever letters you want um, for these pieces right here. Just make sure that you know what you're looking at. All right. So to wrap this up, we are using graphical analysis. Part A, you are doing six length values between 10 and 100 centimeters. Make sure you get 10 periods and discard if your standard deviation is more than a few milliseconds. Graph and compare your constants. Then in part B, you're doing five different amplitudes, so you're pulling the string back. Like, let's grab this, here's your string. You pull it back farther and farther and farther, and then it goes wee. It's the exciting part of the lab. It's the moment you all wanted to do in, well, it's the thing you wanted to do in the first week of lab. Now you can, as long as you take data. That's how you know you're doing science. Discard if it's more than half a millisecond. That says meters per second. Millisecond. There we are. Less than half a millisecond. And then compare your constants. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you in lab.